Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day to start things off. The Litecoin Foundation is moving forward in order to grow the whole Litecoin ecosystem. The foundation decided to set up a dedicated development fund that will be used to sponsor David Burkett, who is a developer for Grin. The main goal is to work with the development of the extension block and Mimblewimble code for Litecoin. The information was released by the Litecoin Foundation just a few hours ago. Litecoin is one of the most popular cryptocurrencies in the market. After Bitcoin, Ether, and XRP. Despite being a leader in the space, it has some issues that Litecoin developers want to address. One of those is related to fungibility. This word is popping up over and over, and we are seeing it more and more over the last couple of days. For those of you, once again, who do not understand, fungibility pretty much comes down to the fact that if you are in Europe, if you're in the Americas, if you're in Canada, if you're in Japan, and you're paying with paper money, the paper money that you give a cashier or that they give you is indistinguishable from any other. It is always the same. A five is a five, a 10 is a 10, a one is a one. However, with uh, many cryptocurrencies, and I, and I dare not even say older cryptocurrencies, they all pretty much run down around this problem, except for ones that have private transactions on top of them. Certain coins, when you're sending them because of their unspent transaction output, I think that's what it is, UTXO, Pretty much if I send you a coin, you send me a coin, you send it to someone else, that person sends it to someone, a person, and that person sends it to a fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth person, person, wow, person, there is a line of transactions as to where that coin has been before. And it pretty much says if a newly minted coin, the one that comes from the mining process ends up coming out, it has no string of transactions. It is brand new. The other one, however, has about seven or eight transactions on top of it. So you can tell where one coin has been as opposed to where the other one was. So to kind of, you know, bring it all home, a dollar is a dollar, a five is a five, a 10 is a 10. Um, however, some Bitcoin are not equal to other Bitcoin the same way that other Litecoin are not equal to other Litecoin, simply because a lot of people and um, investors are calling some of them like dirty coins. And the problem with that is, is that some of these coins... If they're trying to be sent to another part of the world, if they happen to have touched an address and a country has labeled an address as a it's, it's on a black list, that coin is then dirty and the fungibility just simply is not the same. So the goal is to make all coins look exactly the same as other coins by obfuscating and or mixing up and or privatizing in a certain way the way that their transactions are sent. So that when you receive a coin, it looks no different than any other coin. Hope I explain that properly. The Litecoin Foundation is now trying to gather 6,000 US dollars per month or 72,000 per year or this year to fund the development and implementation and development, again, of Mimblewimble via extension blocks. That's the, for those of you who don't know, Mimblewimble is uh, one of the core principles or things on top of the network of Grin, which is a coin that got a lot of attention last year. I think it was last year. It was Grin and what was the other one? Core? Stone? I'm going to get it. It was Grin and Barrett. What was it called? Steam. No, I can't remember. Anyway, there was another coin that came out around the same exact time as Grin. The entire point of Grin was supposed to be a... Um, a new coin that was popping up that you didn't know the creator of who it was anymore. They were trying to have like a Bitcoin 2.0 while not trying to compete against Bitcoin. It was more like a, a new coin that people could kind of trust. But as prices have gone down, many people haven't really heard about Grin that much anymore. The plan is for Mr. Burkett to work 15 hours for Grin and 15 hours for Mimblewimble. And extension blocks, according to the press release, this agreement is going to be mutually beneficial because Grin's code will eventually be forked onto Litecoin's extension block and Grin development will be immediately beneficial to Litecoin. At the same time, considering that Litecoin's code is very similar to Bitcoin's code, Burkett will have a large task ahead. One of the main things that a lot of people have thought or the discussion has arisen many a time, usually, normally, Litecoin is seen as a test net for Bitcoin. Bitcoin has its own test nets. They're multiple at this point. Sorry, I'm still sick. It's, it's winter time. I can't really uh, stop it. And as Litecoin is 
and has historically been used as a test for other things that are going to or could potentially be implemented on top of Bitcoin. This is seen as a huge step because if we end up getting Litecoin with Mimblewimble integrated into it in some sort of way and we have obfuscated private transactions on top of Litecoin, this then means that Bitcoin can also implement the exact same code on top of itself because there were proposals before to have Mimblewimble. Uh, what were the other ones? It wasn't ZK Snarks. There was two other, oh uh, gosh, uh, Taproot and Snore to also have them on top of Bitcoin as well. But a lot of people are very cautious when it comes to writing anything on top of Bitcoin. We spoke about the why before Bitcoin is uh, stable and they kind of want to make it stable even if you have to have the slow transaction. So we heard about this at the beginning of the year from the Litecoin Foundation, from Charlie Lee, the creator of Litecoin, that they were planning on having private transactions on top of Litecoin. I was very hyped, even though I don't normally like coins that have private transactions. I like the idea of a coin that is heavily established, kind of implementing them. And also there were rumors that they'd be able to kind of like flick a switch back and forth saying, you know, uh, they, there are private transactions, there aren't private transactions, because Litecoin has been one of the coins that has had the attention of major players within the space when it came to like... Um, these are the coins that we're going to offer, and it's usually like Bitcoin, Ether, XRP, Litecoin. So uh, while me and Litecoin aren't best friends, I do wish it the best, and I would love to see if something like this will work on, on Litecoin, simply because by extension, it then works on Bitcoin. We also had the news a couple of days ago, weeks ago, something like that, where people, apparently there's like a group of like 100 people trying to focus on private transactions on top of Bitcoin. Would be nice. Trying not to hold my breath, I assume it's a couple of years away. Here's the actual um, announcement right here from the Litecoin people. It says Litecoin Confidential Transactions Dedicated Fund. Litecoin is one of the leading cryptocurrencies in the market. Its blockchain has been working consistently with zero downtime since 2011. In order to continue to grow Litecoin globally, we need to solve the very important issue of fungibility. At the moment, Litecoin transactions are made completely public. That means that certain types of transaction information can be deducted from the Litecoin ledger to track a, purchase, a person's purchase or wealth. And also to pretty much uh, criminalize them, even if they have not done anything. We've also seen this before. A lot of other people have had their cryptocurrency accounts closed on other cryptocurrency exchanges because they said, we see your coins are connected to something that happened three, four, five years ago. It hasn't happened to many people. Thank goodness. But, but the problem is, if it happens to five, it can happen to 15. And then there, there should be no one who has trouble for something that they bought legally through a cryptocurrency exchange or otherwise. Anyway, uh, I'm very excited about this. I'm glad that we're still getting news about this. We had, like I said, at the beginning of the year, talking too fast. At the beginning of the year, we had news that this was going to happen. I think we were told that by the end of this year, it would have taken place. However, uh, the fact that we are still getting updates now about this happening um, satisfies me enough to know that they're working on it. And without further ado, uh, let's move on. Next up, the cryptocurrency exchange Bitfinex has revealed the first of two major upgrades it says will completely change user payments and spending habits. In a tweet on the 2nd of December, the platform CTO Paolo Arduino, Arduino, why can't I say that? Arduino confirmed that as of Tuesday, it would support Bitcoin transactions on the Lightning Network. The move is a first for a major cryptocurrency exchange, Bitfinex announcing it via its updates mailing list. Users will benefit from instant transactions and will pay almost zero fees to send funds via Lightning. The reveal appears to be to correspond to the first of two major integrations Bitfinex announced on its website last month. They said once this feature is unlocked, crypto transactions will never be the same again. The second implementation remains unknown. Improvement remains unknown, but appears to focus on spending rather than exchanging cryptocurrency. When this feature is live, the way you spend crypto will change forever. Lightning came out 2018, start of 2018. Uh, and has received high profile backing from Jack Dorsey. For those of you who don't know, Jack Dorsey, head of Twitter, he's obsessed with Bitcoin. Uh, rolling it on back. This is huge in many different ways. When Lightning was first spoken about in 2017, everyone was like, this is going to completely change how the world works. 
A lot of people assumed that the implementation of Lightning would have been instant. And that's not, we know, we now know, that's not how the cryptocurrency space works. We need nodes, we need things to be activated, we need more adoption of the network because if it can just simply be flicked on, that is centralization. And we don't want centralization in the, in the network or anywhere within the cryptocurrency space because it gives us a single point of failure. If you have an office and someone can go and say, we don't like you, they can close you down. However, they may not like Bitcoin, but they'll also have to shut down, what is it, 50, 60,000 um, nodes around the world to shut down Bitcoin's network. On top of this as well, the Lightning Network, when it was first introduced as a mainnet at the beginning of last year, everyone kind of lost their minds because this was the moment that we would see instantaneous transactions, almost said transactions, transactions within the Bitcoin network. It worked. I think the first couple of months, there were a lot of hiccups. There were a lot of problems. Uh, people allegedly said that they had lost their coins. I just read an article that someone who said he had lost four Bitcoin apparently has recovered almost all of them back. I, I don't know the logistics of how he's getting them back, but apparently, I mean, good for him. Nobody wants to lose four Bitcoin. The other part of it is um, we saw a lot of other companies coming forward, releasing lightning products, lightning nodes, lightning boxes, lightning this, lightning that. Uh, and from what we've seen thus far, the lightning network allows for actual instantaneous transactions like actual super quick and the fee that you pay to send stuff back and forth on the network that you pay to the people who are running lightning nodes i think is like 0 0.0000000001 bitcoin i think you pay just around one satoshi like they can set the network fee but the general network fee for it is one satoshi which is like one twenty thousandth of a cent it's absolutely nothing the fact we've been waiting for a while for a cryptocurrency exchange to actually implement the lightning network because as of thus far it has been experimental if you want to say we had a lot of news at the end of last year and the beginning of this year about lightning nodes the expansion how fast everything was going and i said i thought it was expanding not too fast but the speed of expansion simply correlated in my mind, especially around that this is around the same exact time that we got news from the New York Stock Exchange back to ICE, NASDAQ, yada, 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 uh, that they were all heavily focused on Bitcoin. And I said, I assume that they're also opening up tons of nodes because they're probably, if they're going to have a cryptocurrency exchange or a payment option within themselves, that they're probably going to use Lightning in some sort of way as well. I think that's still going to happen, but it may be a ways off. The point being... If this works properly for Bitfinex and people are, if, if you've ever used another cryptocurrency exchange and you've tried sending uh, Bitcoin, you know, sometimes it is a nail biter. You sit there wondering, did I send it to the right address? Are all my Bitcoin gone? Am I going to be broke? Some of you may laugh. It's completely true. I've sent, I think like a 10th of a Bitcoin one time to a crypto exchange or to my wallet. I don't remember exactly what I was doing. And I remember it took about 35 minutes and I hadn't even received like a confirmation email. And I'm like, okay, it's fine. Got up, used the bathroom, had something to drink, sat back down, refresh the, uh, the, the wallet, still not there. If we can show in the real world, air quotes, that Lightning Network works on Bitfinex for like, let's say about a good three, four, five months. Other crypto exchanges may also start to implement this. And this leads us into a world. I don't know if you can hear the excitement in my voice. This leads us into a world where we can actually use Bitcoin as a payment option. There are no longer than any excuses or uh, arguments of, well, it only does three transactions per second. It is believed that once the Lightning Network is like fully revved up, we'll be able to do over 1 million transactions per second. At one Satoshi per transaction, lightning fast. That's the word lightning network. Now imagine a situation where Bitcoin's price goes up and we can actually use it. it it's, it's, it's revolutionary in a way. I mean, it, it took a while, but nothing happens overnight within the cryptocurrency space that we all definitely know. Very exciting. I hope it actually works out for them. And I, there are also other cryptocurrencies that have also implemented the Lightning Network as well. We don't hear too much about them. I assume their nodes just simply aren't as, 
that's not a word that aren't as multiple there aren't as many of them as there are on bitcoin let's hope this works out for them i believe this is a text right here yep it says lightning network and lightning network assets are not only the best peer-to-peer -peer micropayment solution but an impressive settlement layer for b2b let's hope because this this could be major this could bring us really fast forward in in 2020 uh, next up, Australian users of the cryptocurrency exchange Bitstamp will now be able to deposit U.S. dollars to their account instantly using a Ripple-powered money transfer service called Flash FX. Transfer to the long-running trading venue would previously take days. Flash FX uses Ripple Labs' instant global settlement service called ODL, or On Demand Liquidity, which was previously known as XRapid. The service makes the digital asset XRP a bridging currency between the customer's Australian dollars and the US dollar supported by Bitstamp. Australian users of the crypto asset venue Bitstamp will now be able to transfer their accounts to their funds to the funds to their accounts with US dollars much faster thanks to Ripple Power Global Payment Startup Flash FX. The company uses Ripple's ODL service to yada yada yada. It's come from their website traditionally. Australian Bitstamp users would have been forced to transact via SWIFT through their bank or another payments firm, a now antiquated system from the 70s. For those of you who don't know, SWIFT is from the 1970s. It is a messaging service. Look up sometime during the day how SWIFT works. It is a messaging service, and it has to ping and bounce off of other places, and it's, 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 it's literally like a, a very slow text that's being sent around that takes days to get anywhere. Terrible. And now antiquated system, swift transfers take days and incur significant fees because it has to keep bouncing off of different places. The point being, this is also major. Other cryptocurrency exchanges had announced before that they were going to be implementing XRP as a, not even a payment option, but as something that they would be using to send payments back and forth or to receive payments. This is... I want to say as significant as the Lightning Network thing. I know people are definitely shaking their heads right now. I say it's significant not because it's XRP. It's more so other exchanges. First of all, this is the first exchange to use Lightning, one. Two, uh, there aren't other coins that exchanges are using to be able to transfer US dollars into a digital currency and vice versa back and forth to allow people to be able to fund and deposit stuff onto their account. And this is why it's significant is that they're using a cryptocurrency to be able to do so. If you've never used XRP before, it's also extremely fast, has very low fees, yada, yada, yada. Let's see if this also ends up working out. I think we're starting to, I think, I think I'm, 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 I'm a very hopeful kind of guy. I think we're beginning to see the first implementations of these coins and the usage of these systems on other platforms, i.e. we've tested it, it works, it's fast, Let's use it. This is another way for these coins to be used. I mean, even just in a situation, just even if we want to focus on XRP, because like I said, there aren't other coins that are being used for situations like this. Let's hope it works out. I'm sure other exchanges are going to also be implementing these things as well. Uh, to the five people who keep uh, screaming obscenities to me in the comment section whenever I mention the letters XRP or calling me an XRP shill, Hello to all of you. I, I talk about XRP. I used to talk about XRP a lot more. Uh, it's also because they're not really in the news as much. They haven't really released any information in a while. Um, and when I do now, it's like every eighth video. Anyway, here's the actual press release right here. It says Flash FX runs on Ripple. Fund your Bitstamp USD account in minutes. Uh, let's move on. Next up. Monero is in the news. The Monero network has been successfully upgraded to Random X, a new mining algorithm that aims to be ASIC resistant. On the 30th of November, the Monero community work group did a live stream on YouTube in which the upgrade took place at around the 58 minute mark. The, net, the new upgrade also introduced proof of work algorithm Random X which uses random code execution together with memory-focused techniques to be resistant to application-specific integrated circuits. I saw the word application, and I could see specific out of the next eye, and I wanted to say ape-sick, 
like as an ASIC, because I could see the for uh, resistant to ASIC devices optimized for professional mining operations. The upgrade is reportedly optimized for general purpose central processing units or CPU in order to make the network more decentralized. As a result, for those who wish to use GPU or graphics processing units to mine Monero might find it more difficult to do so. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, in the beginning, Bitcoin mining was for everyone. You can find very old videos on YouTube of people mining Bitcoin in 2010, 2011, somewhere around that time, and they were using their actual laptop. Very old computers that they were still using. They were able to actually get Bitcoin. There was, oh my gosh, there's so many funny videos. I mean, not that funny, kind of funny. There are videos, a little sidetrack. There are videos of people on YouTube uh, mining Bitcoin years and years ago. I kid you not. Uh, when Bitcoin's price was dust. And they have about like three or four computers, like maybe like one big computer that's mining Bitcoin. And they're like, yeah, it's not. I don't think it's really worth it. And they're like, I'm only mining around 0.25 Bitcoin per week. I mean, it's just not. I think I might shut the computers off and you sit there now in the future and you're like, I would love to be able to use my old laptop and get 0.25 Bitcoin per month. You were getting a Bitcoin after a year, you were getting 12 Bitcoin from your computer. Imagine the computer you're using right now, mining 12 Bitcoin by itself. Those days are long gone. And what's happened over time is that people have had to upgrade from many systems. I'm pretty sure you've seen the the videos or the pictures before of stuff from Bitmain and they have thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of machines mining all these cryptocurrencies because the difficulty has gone up. As the difficulty has gone up and the prices have gone up for many cryptocurrencies, many people are like, okay, we need to make new machines. And therefore, these new machines are going to be more powerful, more so and so. And a lot of them are even focused specifically on certain coins. Like there are certain uh graphic cards asic cards whatever you want to call them that have been made that are specifically for certain coins to mine them as as good and strongly as possible that sentence makes no sense once you understand exactly what i'm trying to say so what ended up happening was is that at some point people realized that they could use asic card devices to be able to mine certain cryptocurrencies but when they were doing so, they were pretty much siphoning off 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 percent of the entire network because they had the money to be able to get those machines in abundance as opposed to other people who were once again just trying to use one or two machines. We had other videos and stuff before that we were talking about in 2017 and 2018 for people who actually had just like five little miners, little old machines in their room. And they're like, yeah, I'm mining about a hundredth of a Bitcoin you know, per three or four, five, six, seven, eight days, but it's okay. You know, I believe in the system. And then you have other people who have like tens of thousands of the machines. The point being is that a lot of cryptocurrency foundations, people, whatever, who are behind these things have come forward and they said, we don't want that. We don't want uh, someone who has the money to be able to buy this specific thing, to be able to have more power and or uh, weight thrown around the network than other people. So they continuously upgrade. Uh, we don't talk about Monero that often, and we're probably not going to do it again simply because it's a coin that has private transactions. Governments don't like those. However, um, I don't think that many... Well, listen, that's an entirely different discussion. Uh, the point being, they've upgraded. Good for them. I do like things like this. I want the networks to remain decentralized. I want normal people to be able to have the chance to mine cryptocurrencies in their own way um golf clap for them and let's move on next up wow he looks sad over there wow uh the decentralized cryptocurrency exchange known as crypto bridge announced that it is closing down in a message on its website keep in mind what i just said in the announcement, the exchange warns users that all of the firm's services and servers will terminate on the 15th of December after users will be able to withdraw funds from the exchange until the last day of operations, but deposits will be closed yesterday. The announcement reads, Please note that user verification is required by EU law for all withdrawals. We highly recommend that you start the, the process as early as possible as verification can take a few days. The company cites market conditions, increasingly strict regulation, and lack of funds as reasons for its decision to close and not pursue further development. Uh, and then what ended up happening was is that people were creating fake accounts 
And they were saying, I'm proud to announce Crypto Bridge's termination is not the end. We will be moving our headquarters to Denmark. We will have a new site up and running, so stay tuned. And then the official uh, website was like, nope, our social media channels are closed. All accounts on Twitter that are pretending to be representing Crypto Bridge are fake. We are not planning a comeback at the moment. Uh, you may have noticed one of the first words that I said was decentralized cryptocurrency exchange. These are exchanges that are not meant to have a centralized. This is not me talking negatively about them. It's more like a. These are crypto exchanges that are meant to not have a centralized point of failure, i.e. Uh, not an office you can raid and tell people to shut down. I'm going to assume they were told to terminate. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, by some higher up official government, something told them, hey, you can't do this anymore because you're decentralized. We don't know what you're doing and therefore you have to close. And in essence, they're not really decentralized if you can be closed down by a central entity. The entire point being, um, another one has bit him to dust. This has been happening quite frequently over the course of a year. Why, you might ask? Because a number of places have continuously launched decentralized exchanges from an office. And when you know where that office is, you can shut it down. So uh, this is why a, a couple of the decentralized exchanges where we don't know where they are or who they are or where they made it or whatever are still up and running. If you're gonna use a, a, a decentralized exchange, make sure that it's uh, real and that it works. A lot of them do not have very high liquidity. And a lot of people sometimes get their coins stuck on there. It's, it's a whole bunch of stuff passwords and stuff like that as well. Anyway, here's the actual notice from Crypto Bridge. It says we with great regret regret with great regret we're announcing that Crypto Bridge is shutting down 15th of December, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Tying loosely into this, decentralized exchange Waves Dex shut down to resume operations as a hybrid exchange. Waves announced in a press release shared with Cointelegraph a couple of days ago. Per the release, the exchange has already ceased operations on the old domain, and the process of moving its activities to Waves.exchange has already started. The company announced from this point onwards, the old version of the exchange will be unavailable, and the website will offer other functionality to support migration. User funds held on the Waves Dex will remain completely safe during and after the process, end quote. The hybrid exchange was already partially activated before the migration began earlier today, and it's ex it expects to become fully operational before tomorrow. The company claims that the new trading platform combines the irreversibility of transactions, safety, and user control of funds of the centralized exchanges with the feature of centralized trading platforms. I don't think at the moment we have any majorly 1,000% decentralized exchanges. A lot of them... In order to achieve decentralization, you, a lot actually has to go into it. It's not a, uh, an overnight kind of thing. Uh, we have a couple of them that have promised that they will eventually become 100% decentralized. I think Binance is one of them. We will see how that goes. I had a lot of uh, people, when we first got the, the, the Binance decentralized exchange, a comment section was flooded with people telling me it's not decentralized. I'm like, I, I, I know I, but it's, it's, it's called that. I, I can't change the name of it because of. So, um, well, we were, ex <laughs> you know, what's funny. We were expecting by <laughs> time frame. We were expecting by this time in the future, looking back at 2017, that decentralized exchanges would be abundant. I'm pretty certain a lot of them have, the ones that were going to launch probably did not do so because of uh, our regulations and they were like, no, we shouldn't do so. Uh, but that also stops it from being decentralized. If you stop or don't do something because you are afraid of what a government might tell you, your exchange really isn't decentralized and you probably shouldn't launch it in the first place because you're just fooling people. So let's hope that a lot more decentralized ones actually do launch, do become hyper decentralized and that they are major platforms full of tons of liquidity that we can all use on a daily basis. But yeah, uh, let's move on. To kind of finish things off, this mimics another one because it was another exchange that did the exact same thing. And I'll tell you why it's significant in a couple of seconds. Major cryptocurrency exchange Binance listed four Russian ruble trading pairs. 
According to an announcement just a couple of days ago, the first trading pairs featuring the ruble will be Binance Coin, Bitcoin, Ether, and XRP. Binance CEO Changpeng Cao commented on the development in a tweet that he sent out the same day. Binance's addition of trading pairs follows the introduction of the ruble trading on the platform in late October when Cao announced that users could deposit and withdraw fiat funds in rubles. Um, interestingly enough, I'm not going to even read that part. Um, what's the most interesting about a lot of this is, uh, mm, two cryptocurrency exchanges. I forgot the other one. It was a bit something. And, and then Binance have announced, uh, trading pairs for the Russian ruble within Russia. The news that we had like three days ago was that apparently the Russian parliament was apparently... Um, looking into banning cryptocurrencies, if not cryptocurrency trading within the country, which is also kind of weird because if you paid attention in October, um, Chang Peng Cao was at a conference in, I believe it was Moscow, uh, where he sat on a panel with other um, high ranking members who were talking about the greatness of cryptocurrencies and its usage, usage, the one can only assume assumption time that it's probably not going to be banned, especially I don't think, first of all, in order to do stuff in, in order to do business in certain countries, you have to have paperwork. You, we all know you have to have the stamps. You have to have it take six, seven, eight, nine months. I think it would be a little odd for a company to have waited for a year to have received approval to do something, to have listed cryptocurrencies on their website in conjunction or against the Russian ruble, and then for it to be banned, if that makes any sense. Like, the government probably wouldn't have given out paperwork saying that you are legally able to do so if they planned on banning it within a month. It seems like a bit of a weird situation for both parties, or especially even more so. We've seen other cryptocurrency exchanges list trading pairs before against other coins and other fiat currencies, and other countries have been like, we didn't tell you to do that, take it off. And they took it off. So, yeah, here's the actual information right here. Binance adds trading pairs for Russian ruble. The interesting part is that up until this point, since the last two years, the news that we've heard has been that um, crypto was going to be banned within that country. As of now, it still not has been banned and other exchanges are now listing stuff against their crypto, uh, the cryptocurrency, against their fiat currency. So one can assume it's maybe allegedly going to be legal there. And the last two years have just been a hoax. Yeah. As always, my nose is killing me. It's like driving me absolutely insane. I don't. I've. I don't, I'm drinking tea galore. I have no idea what's going on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters: Shoop Shoop, Diddy Wop, Hummer Hummer Wang Dang, Anytime Fitness Monk's Corner, Ting Tang Walla Walla Bing Bang, Sammy Buucha. Bodie McBoatface, Yes to Crypto, Miller Hitch Chest Every Day, and Kyle Skips Leg Day, Minting Coins, Jeremy Fox, Jim Gardner, Anthony Charles, Nick Mangialavori, Paxis, Crypto and Beer Shipmate, Vlad the Impaler, Richie Rich the Third, Nick Kanaya, Setsuna, Damien, Nicholas Renorth, One Piece, One Love, Cryptopolis, Crypto Artist Coldy 3D, Strange Radio Central, Mick Can Nick, Milweezy, Adobo, Bankroll Network, Crypto Joe, 242 to the World, Wise Night Owl, Jared Schneider, Triple Lemon J, Woody and Daisy, Brady Niels, Master Ventures in Thailand, Mohair, Maroney, Adam Grasick, Todd Mullis, Bear Bones Mining, A Bibliophobia, The Animal Reader, and Professor Wally from Gun Bot University. Thank you all very, very much. I give you, I give you big hug. Mm, thank you all very, very much for your support. I actually closed my eyes for the hug. That was the weirdest thing I've ever done in my entire life. At the moment, if you're afraid of numbers, don't look at the screen because they are red. <laughs> Bitcoin is currently down 1.73%. I mean, it was down 2% before I started the video, so that's a little thumbs up. Uh, the top 10, even Tether is in the red, which is kind of fascinating. Um, Tezos is slightly up, but even then, it's not a real big up. We have a red day. Uh, great news, though, right? Am, am, am I right? The news is kind of fantastic. Uh, Litecoin working towards getting private transactions. Lightning Network being activated on an exchange. 
uh sending money quicker with xrp the monero hard fork exchange is getting shut down but the russian ruble like that's i mean crazy great news yeah i know um anyway i hope you all enjoyed hope you all are having a great day a great morning a great afternoon a great evening <laughs> wherever you are wherever you might be i do hope that it's absolutely fantastic Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.